Hey you witches, how you doing? Um, today we are going to do a book review. We are going to review Of Blood and Bones by Kate Froiler. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Taya. Uh, welcome to the channel. We review all sorts of things witchcraft here. I like to especially focus on traditional witchcraft, but um, anything witchy goes my way. For those of you who are returning viewers, maybe coming in from another video, thank you so much for coming back again. Um, and for all of you, please consider subscribing. It's a great way to help us build the channel. Um, so, Of Blood and Bones by Kate Froiler. Of Blood and Bones, Working with Shadow Magic and the Dark Moon uh, by Kate Froiler, who is a Canadian. She's out of Ontario, Canada, which is exciting. Uh, kind of my neck of the woods, other side of the country, but always exciting to um, see work by other people in Canada. The foreword to this book was written by Matt Oren, who wrote uh, Psychic Witch, so that's kind of cool, another little nod there. And it was published by Llewellyn in 2020. So, I don't know what I was expecting when I picked up this book. Um, I'd read reviews, people were really like, oh, it's like, it talks about dark stuff, it talks about things that are really taboo, and I mean, I work with blood, I work with bones, so I thought, well, I might as well, but I really didn't have a lot of expectations. And I'll get into why in a second. Um, this turned out to be exactly the book I was needing. Um, I'm very, uh, you know, what's the word, I'm very attracted to the sort of the taboo and the dark, um, you know, anything that's kind of crooked path related. And this book, first of all, it does address that darker side, um, and it's very respectful in doing so, respectful to the, to the practitioner, to the practice itself, and all the methods and everything that goes into it. Um, secondly, it was super practical. There's recipes and spells and you name it, and I'm going to go through some of that. And it really also made sense the dark moon for me. I what would you call it? Historically, I've always sort of worked with the new moon and the full moon, the new moon and the full moon. We manifest on the new moon and it comes to fruition on the full moon has sort of been the path I followed. And then now that I am studying witchcraft with, um, in the American folkloric witchcraft tradition, um, it, there's a lot of focus on the dark moon and working with the dark moon. And I really, I mean, I, I get it. I've read books that have explained the dark moon, but it just hasn't kind of clicked and this book really made sense of the dark moon because I mean that's the focus of the entire book so it really made sense of it for me and this book just shines I, like shines shines Ooh! it's amazing in its practical value um there's information and discussion about all kinds of stuff which we're gonna get into but there are comprehensive lists and there are practical spells and not just two or three. There are like, like dozens of practical, here's how you implement this. So often you see these books and they give you a great discussion and you, you, you end the book and you're like, oh my God, this is great. I want to do this. Oh, how do I do that? How do I actually implement that into my practice? And that's where this book shines. Um, she gives you all the discussion, all the, the theory, but then actually shows you here's pre like, here's how you implement this into your practice. Here are rituals you can do. Here are spells that you can cast. Here are like crafts that you can create. Um, the practical in this book is it's just where it shines through. So I'm going to take you through the different sections of the book and then hopefully you can kind of see where some of that value comes in okay so there's four parts part one part one part one is shadow work and the dark moon current so chapter one is dark moon current and liminal spaces she talks about shadow work she talks about the dark moon current she talks about liminal spaces she talks about the dark moon phase how the like the dark moon phases in our life everybody's life goes through dark moon phases um, she talks about creating a dark, dark moon altar, casting a dark moon circle, and a dark moon devotional. So again, very practical stuff. Chapter two is deities and the dark moon. So she talks about the dark moon as crone. She talks about approaching deities, and then gives you a comprehensive listing of deities for dark moon work. And they're all listed by archetype. So she's got a listing of deities who are psychopomps, who, um, who are beings who carry the 
beings who carry the souls of the dead to the afterlife. She gives you a list of deities who are all about destruction and change, deities of war and rulers of the underworld. So kind of a cool list. She gets into the Morrigan um, and does spend some time on the Morgan. And then she actually gives you some practical like invoking deity instruction. Chapter three is Dark Moon Crafts and Basics. I love this chapter. Um, she talks about dark moon water, incense, and a dark moon bath ritual. She talks about death oil and death candles. And I want to clarify, when she's talking about death, it's not like death to another person. Death is killing off negative energy. It's banishing habits or feelings. It's cursing or hexing. It's breaking unhealthy ties with a person or a situation. It's destroying someone's power over you. So when we talk about death, it's death of those things, not death of a person. Um, and then she gets into things like witch's salt and a ton of different sort of practical um, applications. Chapter four is dark moon divination. So about achieving a meditative state, she talks about scrying, uh, creating and using a junk oracle, which is similar to like throwing the bones, but using actual little um, pieces that you find in your life not bones. Um, uh, let's see, there's dream interpretation, there's the dark moon tarot, and then she gets into augury, which is interpreting signs from nature. Then we get into part two, which is blood and bones. Uh, chapter five is blood and other fluids. So she talks about blood and blood safety. She talks about other bodily fluids, which I kind of, um, how can I put these in a YouTube friendly way? Um, other things that your body might excrete, other um, fluids that might come from your body. Yep. Yeah. She talks, and then she gives you six different spells using bodily fluids. And spells for things like protection, fatality, uh, revenge, removing a curse, so like practical stuff. Chapter six is animals and their parts. So finding animal parts like roadkill, finding it in nature, purchasing it from someone. She goes through all different sorts of things. Um, using animals and magic, animal parts in spells, gathering and cleaning bones. So practical. You hear all the time about using bones in your practice, but how do you actually like, great, there's roadkill out in front of my house. And yeah, there's like a leg bone I want. How do, how do you collect that? How do you clean it and prepare it and store it? All of that's in here. Um, a listing of animals and their magical meanings. Again, very comprehensive. Um, 10 different spells using animal remains and then seven different spells using live animals. So things like an ant or worms or an earwig. <laughs> so um, again, animal spells that anybody could really perform. And then chapter seven is bones and skulls. So she talks about human remains. Uh, working with bones, creating and using a bone oracle, uh, and then six different spells using bones and skulls. And then we get into part three, the forbidden craft. Uh, so chapter eight is a witch's curios. So she talks about graveyard goodies, ritual knives, uh, gives you a listing of dark crystals. So she discusses them and then gives you a full listing of different dark crystals. Brimstone, hair and fingernails, um, you name it, all sorts of different things, and then gives you three different spells with common dark magic ingredients. Then we go to chapter nine, which is entirely dedicated to the poppet, about creating a poppet out of cloth clay or in a jar. Uh, then she gives you a great listing about pins. So she talks about pins and then where to insert them on a poppet and why, why you would insert it in that area. And then gives you four different poppet spells. Chapter 10 is cursing and other magical manipulations. So she talks about binding versus cursing. And this is great. She talks about before cursing, take a look in the mirror. Um, I, I really like that she put that in there. It's not just like, hey, great, let's just go do a bunch of curses. It's like, you need to take a look at your emotions, your feelings, your role in that situation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so just sort of before cursing, some things to consider what to do when you've been cursed, um, negative emotions and magic. She goes through a bunch of different emotions, things like um, jealousy, um, regret, etc. And then gives you, there's 11 different spells and curses in this chapter. Chapter 11 is on sacrifice. 
So she talks about reasons for sacrifice, misconceptions of witchcraft and sacrifice, right? We're not out here sacrificing people and babies. Um, fasting as a sacrifice, including a dark moon fasting ceremony. Plant sacrifice, which I thought was really interesting. I'd never considered sacrificing plants. And spells, uh, three different spells with sacrifices in them. So you can kind of see how to work a sacrifice into a spell. And then part four, the final part, is looking death and rebirth in the face. Um, this, this last section is interesting, but I really feel like she shined in those first three parts. They were very practical. This is chapter 12 is death and death, right? So death is a cycle, death of a familiar pet. Um, she gives you an actual funeral rite that you could perform for um, a pet or for a person. Um, she talks about tears and magic, and then funeral crafts. She gives you seven different funeral crafts that you can do. Things like drying flowers, stuff like that. Chapter 13, working with the dead. So, again, I mean, this there's whole books written about working with the dead. But methods for contacting the dead, reconnecting with deceased loved ones, connecting with your ancestral lineage, and getting rid of unwanted spirits. So I think that's, you know, it's kind of practical. Um, and again, right, she can't get into the kind of detail that you do in, when there's whole entire books, but I think it was, I, I think it was a good inclusion in this, in this book. And then chapter 14 is about rebirth. It's just a short chapter. And at the beginning they talked, she talked about the dark moon phase in life. And then she talks about looking for signs of a new beginning when you're coming out of that dark moon phase and then gives you four different spells for rebirth and growth. So all in all, I hope you can see where it's a really practical book. There's like lots of discussion, lots of interesting topics, and then there's actual spell work on how you take that information, all those different details, and actually how you work them in your craft, how you use them to accomplish whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. And I think that's really where this book shines, is that practical aspect. So often you see you know, you see these books and they, they get you super hyped and you're like, oh my gosh, this is great. I want to do it. But then it's like, how, how do I actually incorporate that? Where's the practical steps to do this in my practice? Um, so yeah, it really shines in the practical application and instruction because it, it's not just a theoretical discussion. And I just, I love that about this book. So I think, I mean, part of the reason I'm so impressed with this book is I really didn't have any expectations of it. But I do think that Kate Froehler did an excellent job of revealing dark taboos of blood and bones in witchcraft. I think she really did an excellent job. So that's of blood and bones. Um, what's the tagline there? Working with Shadow Magic and the Dark Moon by Kate Froehler, forward by Matt Oren, published by Llewellyn in 2020. I think it's a phenomenal book. And if you are at all interested in any of those subjects that I went through, pick it up. It's a, it's a great little book. And I really feel like it just addresses things that I'll, like other authors just sort of haven't really wanted to touch on. And it's very, very practical. So have you read this book? Have you read of Blood and Bones by Kate Froehler? I would love to hear what you thought of it. Leave us a comment down below. And otherwise, yeah, that was our video. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks so much, guys.